pray that this doesn't happen, right? We can hope, we can be responsible, we can call things out as evil. Hey everybody, I'm Richard and welcome to Contra Thoughts. I've got a new episode coming for you right now. Okay, so Ahmed Arbery, uh, murder case. It was a man, he was a man in Georgia, murdered. Um, three guys are charged and guilty. And similar to the Kyle Rittenhouse case, I didn't really follow this very much, so I'm not going to comment too much on it because I don't want to pretend like I know a lot when I don't. Um, but again, this is totally the opposite in one sense of the Rittenhouse case, uh, but justice is served. Kyle Rittenhouse killed two guys who were attacking him. Uh, there's plenty of video of that. And he's found innocent, uh, or not guilty at least, right? And then Ahmed Arbery, a man who's walking, a uh, more melanated man, a black man, as some like to use, African-American, was murdered by three guys with less melanin than me, white guys, so-called. They were found guilty, and this is the same justice system, the same type of process that goes through. So we must rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Uh, sadly, the men who killed him being sentenced doesn't uh, bring back Arbery at all. Uh, the Sixth Commandment is clear of you shall not murder, and plenty of other places as well, treating people like you want to be treated and so on, is something that well, that's why murder's wrong. And when you have a God-focused, Bible-focused, Christ-centered, spirit-filled worldview, it's wrong, right? We see this. We understand this. And as Christians, we can say murder's wrong, whether it's the unborn, whether it's the elderly, whether it's a man walking uh, in broad daylight in Georgia where people are trying to make a citizen's arrest, so-called, and uh, at least that was their story, and they end up killing the man. Now, <laughs> it's it's just hypocrisy for so many people, either Christians or non-Christians, to rejoice at this, but not at the Rittenhouse case or the other way around, you know, and think, well, Rittenhouse was innocent. Uh, so yeah, but eh, this other one, who really cares? So I'm talking about it uh, because I don't want to be, you know, we're all biased. You're biased. I'm biased. But we don't want to be, I don't want to be at least uh, partial as much as possible to show partiality, right? God doesn't show partiality. We shouldn't either. That being said, um, again, there's not that much that I followed in this case just because uh, there's a million things going on. You might have followed it more closely. Drop a comment. Let me know. Uh, what did I miss or something I should have inc uh, included? But we can rejoice that the justice system didn't just find these men, it doesn't appear, guilty because they had light skin and he has darker skin. And this is what the narrative says. Now, of course, BLM um, and, and Al Sharpton, one of the race baiters, uh, was there with Ahmed Arbery's dad. I'll play this clip now because, well, let's just play it. Number one, I want to give all glory to God. Because that's who made all this possible. Yes, it is. Number two, I want to thank his mama. Yes. And I want to thank my sisters and brothers. I want to thank my children for being strong through this rough time. Yes. Because I knew it was hard what they had to deal with. Yes. And number two, I want to thank all y'all people, all the support y'all gave us. Because yes. one of us ain't did this. Yes. Ain't no one side did this. That's right. right. So there ain't no one side. You know what I say? God don't work, work one side. God work two sides. All right, I'm going to put you here, I'm going to put you there. Amen. So y'all pull together and work this thing. Amen. So hey, Amen. that's what it's all about. <laughs> all right, so we can see, what does he say? He says he thanks God, right? He thanks God, which BLM, uh, Black Lives Matter, as an organization, so-called, is uh, a basically a terrorist organization. And they use intimidation and they use all sorts of force and tactics to do what they want to achieve. They're not part of, they're not like a new version of the Civil Rights Act where the Civil Rights Act and the civil rights leaders and such used 
things within the scripture and saying, you know, using God language and, and um, all that stuff, you know, don't be judged by the content, be judged on the content of character, not the color of your skin and so on is a whole different paradigm because it's not at all the same movement at all. Uh, but of course, Re Reverend Al Sharpton's there, race baiting as usual, looking all, you know, smug, that's him off to the right. And uh, Arbery says, you know, thank God. You know, and he kind of starts going and preaching a little bit. And I can only imagine how emotional it would be to have your son be murdered, you know, and especially in a climate, as it were, uh, today. And you instantly think it's it's um, racism, race related and so on. Um, did they say this was motivated, motivated by racism? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sure some people have said that. Other people I'm sure have not. So I don't know. I'm not going to say that. But the fact of the matter is. He he's thanking God. Well, BLM is abjectly atheistic. Uh, they are not at all about God. They are not at all about the family. They want to push uh, abject sexuality and everything else under the sun. And so, yeah, it's pretty interesting. And you can kind of see like the, the the shift. They're like, oh, what did he just did he just say? Thank God. Oh, you're not supposed to say that. Um, anyway. So at least justice is served, just as justice was served with Rittenhouse, justice is served with the Arbery case. And um, we, can, we pray can pray that this doesn't happen, right? We can hope, we can be responsible, we can call things out as evil uh, accordingly. Now, of course, they'll probably use, there's a lawyer I watched a clip of, and he was talking about how the Supreme Court has a court case out of New York, and they might restrict or loosen open carry gun laws, blah, 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 blah. Well, again, a well-armed militia is the best uh, best fight against um, a tyrannical government. And a lot of people think that. Like, a lot of leftists are like, oh, well, why do you need an AR-15? Well, I don't even have an AR-15. Or do I? Um, <clears throat> but, you know, I should want to carry one. If I, if I can have one, I should want one. Just like you should want one. Or a shotgun, or a pistol, or something like that. Why? Because, well, I mean, the fact of the matter is intimidation, number one. If people know or think that you have a gun, they're going to be a lot less likely to, oh, I don't know, steal your car, come into your house, or, I don't know, come through your town and demand papers from you, or whatever, right? Um, but when they know, like there's a lot of other countries, and we, you know, even look at like Australia, for example, you know, the prison colony 2.0, <laughs> They don't have guns. And so they know that. And therefore, it's like, well, we'll just harass these people. We'll, you know, they're out marching. So we're going to beat them to a living pulp and um, bloody pulp, whatever. They know that, right? England, many other places. Canada. Canada, well, you turn and you have knife attacks, right? This happened in Australia. I did another video on that a while back. Uh, Australia and New Zealand. And, or people attacking people with cars. This happened, and I probably won't do a video on it, again, because there's just so much. Uh, but the heinous nonsense of the car, you know, accident or whatever they're, you know, depending on who you talk to and what media spin, is in um, in uh, Wisconsin. You know, the Christmas parade. And it's like, and this guy killed more people than Rittenhouse did. And it's like, oh, it's just an accident. Oh, he was being chased. No, he wasn't being chased, blah, blah, blah. blah. And it's like, you drove through a parade and you killed half a dozen people. And you injured dozens and dozens of others and this happened this happens in france this happens all over the place when there's no weapons um like a gun they create other weapons right because this isn't really the problem right you can't just choke somebody uh, or you can rather choke somebody physically right but you can use anything any sort of blunt object a baseball bat a brick a knife your hands you can't ban sin in that sense now you should restrict it because, well, God says so. But the problem is the heart. It's always the heart. God is always after our heart. He's always after our heart, both in the Old and the New Testament. God doesn't change. He's yesterday, same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you have a murderous heart, like James tells us, that leads to murder, you don't just automatically murder somebody, right? It first gives birth to sin and brings forth death, right? You're envious, you're striving, you're angry. Murder, you're never... A calm, normal person, ever, I would say, ever, 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 who then goes and murders somebody, 
you have to start by being angry first. You have to. And uh, that's why the scripture is so clear that links murder and uh, anger so close together. So anyway, I hope you find this well. Um, go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you to the new subscribers. And I'm going to be trying to produce more videos lately. As you can tell, I'm in a different location. I've um, mostly finished my uh, office, my new attic office. I'm now in a cabin. It's a sweat lodge. Uh, it's a sauna. This is actually real behind me. This is really wood. Um, it's not just a green screen. But uh, that's it. Uh, Y'all take care, and we'll see you on the next video.